the hills of Lombardy in northern Italy have been inhabited by different tribes since the Iron Age, specifically a tribe called the Orobi. And it is here in this magnificent lake, Lago di Como, Lake of Como, where we're going to take you today to discover the history and some wonderful book recommendations. But first, this is Latina Literati. The Romans subjugated the tribes in the first century. It was none other than Julius Caesar who establishes the city of Cuomo. If you look at the Lago di Cuomo, it looks kind of like a person dancing. And at the very toe is the city of Cuomo. And Julius Caesar had the swamp south of the city drained and set up a, an administrative center that was called Novum Comum as a municipium or municipality. And so that becomes the center of a Roman administration for that area throughout the time that the Romans held this territory. And as you can imagine, it's a territory that everybody wants. And so once Rome falls, then people start, different other entities want to incorporate this beautiful lake and the hills around it as part of their nations. Como is at the center of Lombardy, and Lombardy is considered the part of Italy that is north of the river Po, and it has considered itself different and apart from most of Italy for most of human history. It's only been, I don't know, 200 years, I would say yes, even 150 years, um, that Italy is a united nation, uh, but we'll get into that a little bit later. Como, Lago di Como, is at the foot of the Italian Alps, and it's kind of snuggled uh, near Switzerland, if, if you can snuggle to Switzerland, I'm not sure you can. <laughs> uh, it currently has about 85,000 inhabitants, but that's gone up and down over the many, many years that it has existed. Uh, well, it's 2,000 years <laughs> that it's existed, actually. So it's a long, a long time. After Rome falls, then you have the different ruling families coming to terms and setting up councils. They called it credenza. So they had the bishop becomes the head of state. And it's not just Cuomo, but it's the whole diocese, the whole area that is under administration from the administrative center of Cuomo, because basically, as you recall, the um, different areas just kind of replace Roman entities or municipalities or areas with the church. So the diocese takes over the Roman areas using more or less many times the same designation in terms of the areas around the cities. So the Archbishop of Como becomes the head of state and they have different councils and they're in constant rivalry with Milan because you have different, as I mentioned, entities. So you have, for example, La Serenissima, you have the Venetian Empire Republic very close, as close as Bergamo, and you also have uh, the Milanese that constantly want more and more territory. There'll actually be wars between the area of Como and the area of Milan for different, different cities that they want to be part of their territory. So Milan and the towns of Lombardy around the Como area go back and forth uh, on territorial disputes and they are of course incorporated into French administration at one point and then Spanish administration under another point and then under the Austro-Hungarian Empire they're incorporated until the arrival of Napoleon. And Napoleon then that brings them again back into French uh, administration. In 1815, the Austrian administration comes back under the Austro-Hungarian Empire until 1859, when Giuseppe Garibaldi comes riding up from the south, and his well-known phrase, avanti senza paura, forward without fear, was his mantra and his call as he tried to unite the different areas of the uh, peninsula, the whole boot, uh, into this 
Republic or this kingdom of Italy under the House of Savoy. So fascinating that you have all of these city-states that have existed for hundreds and hundreds of years, and here comes uh, Garibaldi saying, we need to unite, we need to have a common nationality, and it's going to be called Italia. Again, relatively recent, we're talking, you know, 1859, so that's, you know, not even 200 years ago. It's pretty fascinating. At the end of World War II, Benito Mussolini goes through Cuomo and it is at a town at another part of the lake where he is caught by partisans and he and his mistress meet their end. So that's a historic little side note. But today Cuomo is one of the tourist destinations when you talk about the Lake District in Italy. And it's just a stunning, stunning place. The lake is beautiful, the towns are spectacular, and uh, it's just so beautiful. It's also in recent decades become a big party destination. Many people get married along the beautiful lake. There are villas that you can rent for parties or special occasions. The most famous, of course, is Villa de Este, which is now a hotel, but was once uh, the summer home of the very powerful Este family. So it's now a hotel, a convention center, and a health club. And of course, near it live the Clooney's. So you know when they're there, when there's a lot of paparazzi on boats, trying to get a shot of them. <laughs> so Como is a beautiful place any time of year, whether it's in the winter, frigid cold, summer, really hot, spring, fall, all beautiful times to visit Como. And Como is kind of your welcoming doorway to the lake. And there are many, many beautiful towns to visit by boat. Places like Bellagio, not the one in Las Vegas, the real one, uh, Varena, there are beautiful towns, cafes, restaurants that will just make you want to stay. <laughs> you get on the boat, you ride in this beautiful lake, and you visit these towns that look like postcards, and you get to walk around and enjoy the beautiful vistas of the lake and the, and the mountains. It's very peaceful, very beautiful. On this very brief trip to Como, we visited very, very dear friends, and it is to them that I dedicate this video. Giovanna and Carlo, this video is for you. When you visit Como, you want to visit the old part of the city that's within the walled, uh, the walls of the original uh, city. So there are many churches and different beautiful squares and pieces of art in different areas that you want to see. It's fascinating. It's just full of history and you're really going to enjoy Como. So please visit if you have a chance. <laughs> Now for my favorite part of the video, the book recommendations. Of course, the books that I am recommending today are all Como inspired. And so the first is the quintessential Italian novel by Alessandro Manzoni, The Betrothed. And it is full of adventure and full of all sorts of characters. And it gives you an insight into what life when it was a city-state was like several hundred years ago. And the heroine Lucia or Lucia is trying to marry her betrothed. And they have to go through all sorts of trials and tribulations and the role that the different friars play and the roles that the landowners play as they try and keep them apart. And so it's fascinating as they go through their adventures. So highly recommend it. This is a classic Italian work. And so if you want to get a sense of Italian life um, many centuries ago in the Cuomo area, this is the book to read. It's a really great book. And as always, check your library or your local bookseller. We love our local booksellers. We love our libraries and they may have these books that you can borrow or purchase. And as always, if perchance that's not available to you, we do leave links in the description box below so that you can purchase them new or used from independent booksellers because we want to support independent booksellers. <laughs> the second book is called Italian Village Life, a perspective from Lake Como by Paul Wright. And so this is what people would call an expat so if you leave your country and go live somewhere because it's so beautiful, you're an expat. If you leave your country because you have to leave, then you're an immigrant. That's crazy. But 
in any case, Paul Wright does a beautiful job of giving you all the details. He has lived many years in Cuomo. He's an artist. And so he just sits down with, for example, the retirees on the piazza and comments about life. And so you get a lot of insight into the day-to-day -day life in Cuomo. And it's just a fun read. It's a it's very insightful and it's humorous and it's a great book. So highly recommend that as well. The most famous of the sons of Cuomo is, of course, Alessandro Volta. He considered himself a philosopher, a naturalist, an inventor. And indeed, uh, Alessandro Volta is the person credited with having invented the battery, having the ability to capture electric current, and of course revolutionizes the time of enlightenment and science in Uh, in Europe and it just takes his invention of course just takes the world by storm. So Giuliano Pancaldi takes us to a time of enlightenment in his book where he gives you the details of Alessandro Volta's life. It's where we get words like voltaic, voltage, And so there are very beautiful statues. There's a very modern one right on the lake. And then there's a more traditional one of Alessandro Volta to Alessandro, dedicated to Alessandro Volta and the amazing contribution that he made to our modern life, uh, being able to harness the power of electricity. And so that's a fascinating read. He was a fascinating man and really, really recommend it if this is something that's of interest to you. Uh, just so much to learn about Alessandro Volta and that whole time when um, science was kind was just coming into its own and there are all of these people, inventors, self-taught inventors that are experimenting and gaining all of this incredible, incredible steps towards what we now consider modern life, like the battery. <laughs> Thank you so much for this joint journey. This was a really special video and it's made with a great deal of love. Como is a very special place and uh, it was wonderful to visit if it was just a brief, a brief visit. Uh, thank you for all of your comments and support. We would love you to subscribe to Latina Literati and we would love to hear from you. What are you reading? Uh, have you been to Cuomo? Do you have any Cuomo inspired books or any other books? What are you reading? We love to get book recommendations from our community as well. So as always, we thank you con mucho cariño, mucho salud, mucho amor. Gracias. Thank you.